Hi, I'm Carla Alexander, and I'm so excited to show you my new ruler, the spider web. I named it that because it creates the old-fashioned block that looks like a spider web. So it's always a lot of fun to buy new quilting tools, and it's especially great when they can do more than one thing. Once you see my video, I think you'll agree that this is one of those tools. So to begin with, I want to show you all the shapes that you can cut with the ruler and why it's different from other rulers that look pretty similar. First of all, you can use it to cut 15 different sized triangles, kite shapes, background pieces, and half square triangles. Also, a chart with approximate finished block sizes as well as the number of pieces you can cut from a 40 inch strip are packaged with the ruler. This is an enlarged version of the ruler. I wanted to show you a close up view so you can see the numbers that are printed down the center. You'll notice the numbers are all in sets of two each. The top number corresponds with the width of the strip used to cut the triangles from. The bottom number represents the square size you'll need to cut a kite shape from. So for example, if you had a strip width that was 4 inches wide to cut your triangles, you'd find the 4, look at the number right underneath which says 3 and a half. that's the size of square you're going to need to cut a kite shape from. What I have here is a strip set that equals 4 inches. I've taken three different strips and pieced them together to get to that width. So now I'm going to take my ruler, I'm going to find the four inch measurement on the ruler and align it with the bottom edge of that strip set. The little black triangle will always hang off the opposite end. I'm going to cut on the left hand side and then on the right hand side, lift the ruler up and rotate it 180 degrees. Again I'm going to find the four inch measurement line and align that with the edge of the strip set with the little black triangle hanging off the bottom. And I'm going to continue cutting another triangle. Pick the ruler up, rotate it once again, and you'll continue on like this until you get all the triangles that you need. To cut the kite shapes for these four inch triangles, I'll need to locate the four inch mark in the center of the ruler. Then find the number directly below it. This is the size I'll need my squares to be cut for the kites. Then I'll place the square under the ruler, lining it up with the placement line. Cut on either side to create the kite. Okay, so here you can see I've cut two kites and I've got four triangles and I'll show you how they go together into a block. There's one side of my block. I'll sew that together first. I'll sew the other half together. And then I'll combine the halves together. To cut the background pieces for the floating spiderweb block, double the measurement used to cut the kites. For example, if your kite was three and a half inches, your background square will be seven. Slice the square in half diagonally from corner to corner, and then fold the pieces together. Take your ruler and place it over the top, like this. using the same placement lines used to cut the kites. Slice one side off to create a right and a left background piece. The triangles will fit into each half like this. These background pieces are oversized and once they're sewed together they'll be squared up to match the edge of the triangles. The last shape you'll need to know how to cut are for the corner triangles used in this kaleidoscope block. Refer to your ruler to find the correct measurement. In this example, my kaleidoscope triangles were cut from a five and a half inch wide strip. Locate the five and a half inch measurement in the center of the ruler and cut a square to the size listed below it. In this example, it would be four and three quarter inch squares. Cut two squares for one block. Slice the squares in half diagonally to yield four triangles. Center and sew the triangles to each of the corners of the kaleidoscope block. The triangles are oversized and after you're done sewing can be squared even with the edges of the block. 
One spider web block consists of two halves, and each half has two triangles and one kite shape. Four of these blocks combined make up one complete spider web block. Here's another version of the spiderweb block. As you can see, the block down here is continuous, with each corner always beginning a new web. The block up here is called a floating spiderweb. The ruler will cut the background pieces needed to make these blocks. The pieces are oversized and will be trimmed later. Okay, now let's move on to a new block. This block is called a four-pointed star, and it's made up using the exact same shapes as the spiderweb. The only difference is that the kite shapes are cut from a darker value fabric than the triangles. This emphasizes the star rather than the web. You can also use half square triangles on the corners to create a floating star. This last block is a kaleidoscope. To make it, you'll need to cut eight large triangles and four small half square triangles. For this block, I used four light value triangles and alternated them with four dark. Then I added the four corner triangles. The corners are always oversized and are trimmed even with the triangles when the block is complete. This is a quilt I call Tango. I use my stack the deck method to piece the strip sets together. Then I cut my triangles. I used a mix of different gray prints for the background and the kite shapes. Notice the blocks in the perimeter. This is where you'll use the background shapes to stop the spiderweb design. If you have a stash, this would be a great quilt to use it on. Okay, let's take a look at the actual blocks in that quilt. And there's two main blocks, as you see right here. And one is a background block and one is a spiderweb block. So the difference is the background block, like the spiderweb block, is divided in half. But it has one triangle on each half and a background shape. And the background shapes look like this, and it's sewed together with the triangle, and then the other side is completed, and then they're joined together. To make the spiderweb block, you won't need the background piece. What you'll need instead is, once again, two halves, and you have two triangles on either side, and each of them are combined together with a kite shape, and that completes that block. Here's a couple table runners I made using the ruler. The one on the top was made using the basic spiderweb block with the kite shapes. Notice how the spiderweb blocks continue into the border, always beginning a new design. Here's a close-up of those blocks, and what you can see is that they're really made up of four of the uh, spiderweb blocks. Once again, split in half diagonally with the two triangles and one kite shape. The unique fabric for this particular table runner makes it look like a kaleidoscope. The runner on the bottom is a bonus pattern from the quilt Tango and is also made using the basic spiderweb blocks. Notice how choosing a dark fabric for the kite shape makes a star appear. This is the bonus table runner that comes with Tango and these little pieces are the leftovers and what I did is I took those triangles and I pieced the kite shape right here like this and I made four of those sections pieced them together into one block, and made the table runner. Now you can see this block right here really is exactly the same as what is in Tango. It's just all in the way you sew them together, you can get a different look. This quilt's called Junk Jewelry, and it's one of the more simple quilts using the basic spiderweb block. I used a variety of different prints to make the quilt. So here it is, and I'll show you the actual pieces. Um, these are great big blocks and there's only spider webs, there's no background pieces in there. And you can see that the block is once again divided in half, and each half has two triangles and a kite shape. The kite shapes are usually oversized, and when you complete your blocks, you just trim this edge right here even with the outside edge of the triangles. And there you have junk jewelry. I've had so much fun using my new ruler, and I made this quilt up using leftover scraps from another quilt, 
and you can see that there's always red on one edge and brown on the other and so the centers are just exactly the opposite. Okay, let's look at another quilt. Here's another quilt I just finished. To make it, I piece my strip sets with three different colors, always using the same width of each, resulting in an equal number of triangles with either a red or a black edge. I then piece light colors together to get this quilt I call Cocoon. This quilt is called Marco Polo and is made up of kaleidoscope blocks. Each block has eight triangles and four half square triangles for the corners. Notice how I added dark triangles in the blocks around the perimeter to help begin the border. So here's a close up of that quilt. And what's kind of cool is you get this circle that goes around what looks like a four pointed star right here. But the actual block is right up here and it's a kaleidoscope block. It's split into two halves, and each half has four triangles that are sewn together. And then once each half is complete, they're joined together into one block. The half square triangles are added on the corners, and then they're trimmed even with the bottom of the triangles. Here's another fun way to make a block if you're working from your stash. Um, I just chose some fabric with uh, uneven stripes on it and then you get a block that looks like that. For another example, um, I loved using this fabric right here with uh, all the different designs on it by Paula Nadelstern and when you cut that up you can get some really unique blocks that look like that. You always need to be careful before you sew your corner uh, little triangles on and make sure that you like the contrast and I kind of like to try them on before I sew to make sure I like what I have. So I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful and I hope you'll stay tuned for part two. So today I'm going to show you how to twirl the seams on your spiderweb blocks. Here's a spiderweb block right here, and here's the square, the block that you finish. And what I want to show you is right in here how to get rid of all of the excess seam allowance and all the bulk that you would normally have with that many seams coming together. Okay, so here we are with a spiderweb block. And I'm going to work backwards so you can see how I put this together with the least amount of bulk. I'm going to flip it upside down. You can see how all those seams come together. But the way I sewed it, I'm going to show you how to do what I call twirl the seam. Because you see these seams are all going this direction, and the way I sewed it, now I'm able to take that seam and press it this way. And so this is a twirled seam, and you can see how it reduces all of the uh, bulk that would normally be right here, right in the center. So the way I do that, and, and for the video, I've marked my pieces with a half inch seam allowance you'll be using a quarter inch, but I marked a half inch so you could see it just a little bit better for the camera. So here I go, I'm going to, this will also show you the offset. I'm going to place these two pieces right sides together, and if you look, you can see how I'm lining up that line right here. Okay, and what I need to make happen is right where that line comes out, I need to match it right there with the blue. And it's always a good idea to use a pin to check out uh, what it's going to look like when you're done sewing. Now you can see the pin and I can flip that open and there we have it and so what I don't want to see is I don't want one of these pieces to be higher than the other so you can see they form a nice little point and later on I can trim that little tip off. So I'm going to go ahead and sew that little piece right there and here I have one that's already done. So here we are and now it's time to add the second piece. So to add the second piece, I'm going to, once again, see that placement line right here, and I'm going to go ahead and pre-pin that to make sure that when I open this top piece up that it's aligned nicely so I have a nice straight edge there across the top. So there's my pin. and. There we go. So when I sew that, I have a nice 
straight edge. So you want to be careful because this is on the bias and sometimes that can kind of puff out a little bit. So you want to, if you pre-pin, that's always a good idea. So now I'm ready to sew. So I'm going to flip this back over like this. And what I like to do uh, to twirl the seam is I like to begin down here and then I'm going to sew up to a half of an inch, in this case, because I used a half inch seam allowance. If you're using a quarter inch, of course, you'd use a quarter inch seam allowance. You'd come up to a quarter inch from the top. And I'm going to stop right there. And here is one that's already done. And you can see uh, where I stopped right before I got to the seam allowance. So I started sewing, and I stopped right at the seam allowance where it, where it would otherwise cross. And then when I open it up, I'm pressing all in one direction. So what you can see with this is you have what I call a partial seam. As long as you've back tacked just like one stitch, you're going to be fine. I have a nice straight line right there across the top. And now I'm going to show you. Uh, here's another set that I've already pre-sewed. You can see on this one I've trimmed those off. and. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my ruler and trim that little excess piece off. I don't need that little excess piece. So that's what I've done with the two sets underneath here. And now I've got it pinned. In this case, a half inch. You'll be using a quarter inch seam allowance. And what I like to do is I like to uh, kind of open it up like this so I see a little diamond. And that way I know I'm pretty much in the right place. And then at that point, once they're equal, I'm going to take a pin and place it right across the top of that seam allowance and put it right here. And I want to open these up and make sure I have a nice straight line going both ways. If I don't, I can always readjust that piece. Then when I go to sew, I'm just going to start right from this edge and sew right to the opposite edge. That takes us back to where we started. So here we are. And with the piece that I just sewed all the way across. And then when I open this block up, I will twirl that seam going that way. And that piece will automatically fold to that side. So now all my seam allowances are headed in one direction. And this makes this really flat right here. And you can see from the top that I have a nice match. And you can see that even if I tug on it, there's no little hole from the partial seam because I did the little back tack. And so that's going to greatly reduce all the seam allowance bulk right there. OK, so now I'm going to show you another way to use the spider web ruler. And you can see this quilt behind me. It's called a tall tumble. And what I did is I took my ruler. And you can see right here. And you can use highlight tape or whatever you want um, or sticky notes. Uh, there was a lot of numbers going through the ruler. And so what I did, rather than put a line here, is I just used the little sticky notes. And you can see the little frosted square grippers there. I put the sticky note right to the point of those uh, little squares, right, the di diamonds that run down through the center. That's going to be one placement line for me when I make these little side edge pieces. So let's get into it. So what I do is I take a strip. In this case, for a tall tumble, I used a 7 and a half inch strip. I folded it in half, wrong sides together, nice and neat. And then I go ahead and I trim off that excess selvage. OK? So 10 and a half is the magic measurement, or 10 inches is a magic uh, placement line here on my ruler. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set this down, and I'm going to align the 10 inch measurement on my ruler right along the bottom edge of my strip. These little placement notes I go have right here, now we're going to float to the edge of my strip. I'm going to go ahead and cut right here. Then I'm going to rotate my ruler. And once again, I'm going to match up the 10 inch measurement. I'm going to cut again. I'm going to continue like that, always matching the 10 inch measurement. Cut again. And for the last piece, Last time, and you can see my excess is just, just a small little piece is what's left over. So I'm going to cut multiple strips just like that, uh, layer them and cut them up. And now I'm going to show you how those would go together in the quilt, like in the quilt behind me. So you just alternate them. You flip one 180 degrees up and one down. And what's so awesome is when you folded that strip together, you get the right and the left edge. You get a mirror image 
um, for the edges. So it makes it nice and easy to sew together. When I sew these, you still have a little bit of an offset because there is an angle. So you always want to pre-pin that if you're concerned. And what I like to do is I like to slide this top piece up. My quarter inch would be right here. And I want to follow that up right at that spot right there is where I would want that yellow piece to begin. And I'm going to put a, I'm going to put a placement pin in there just to check. There we go. And then when I open it up, I want it to be aligned nice and perfectly. And you can see that it will be. And it will also uh, end up the same on the bottom. This is a fast quilt to make. You can use large prints, large scale prints, medium, it, as long as you like the way they all look together. It's an easy project to do in a weekend or even in an afternoon. So I hope you've enjoyed the ruler. And I hope I've given you enough blocks to uh, give you some wiggle room to play with. You have the spider web block right here. You have a kaleidoscope block that you can also make right here using the ruler, and you can check out the other videos for that, or you have the tall tumble. So enjoy the ruler and quilt on.